And what do you think of Luke's dancing so far? He's pretty good. As you can see, we're all very you, sweaty. I mean, this is, this, you can be honest. He's good. I didn't think he was going to have any rhythm. But he does. He does. Surprisingly, he's doing really, really well. He's doing really well. I can't wait to show you this. You've got That's rhythm, Luke. Nice. You've got rhythm. Oh, she's only saying that because no. I'm here. Five, six, seven, five. Support Wrestle Talk! Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk News. I am El Fakador Laurie Blake, and as you can see from those clips, I'm just days away from embarrassing myself on stage in front of a live audience with those two goofs. So, apologies if I'm a little grumpier than usual during the news. If you cast your mind back to Monday's Raw, which was basically a big old mess of beatdowns and team-ups, kind of like a Marvel movie, but without the years of planning, somewhere in that melee, the Shield got themselves arrested, bundled into a van, shipped off to the police station, and then before the night was out, they were back in the van, no Rosas in sight. Well, thankfully, Corey Graves' detective agency is on the case to explain how the Shield got themselves unarrested and un-in trouble. It turns out it wasn't just the moment some writers put in thinking, that would be cool, we don't need to explain that. It was all David Atunga. Made a few calls this morning. Turns out David Atunga has a judge friend in Columbus and called in a late night Labor Day favor for the Shield. Everybody can relax now. Stressed out smile emoji. Where was David Atunga when we needed him? Phone Manchester Council, Dave. Phone Cultaholic's mum. Jack still lives with his. I don't want to dance. If the non-stop Shield action on Raw has got you wishing for more three-man factions in WWE, well, NXT has you covered. As last night's episode saw the long-awaited debut of the Forgotten Sons, who got a win over the Street Profits. And Wesley Blake certainly has been forgotten for a while. While his buddy Murphy's been off being the juggernaut of 205 Live, he's been a locker room only kind of guy. But now that he's formed the Forgotten Sons with Steve Cutler and Jackson Riker, the former gunner from TNA, and now the owner of the most WWE name in all of existence, we can expect more Blake on our screens. And we all want more Blake on our screens, don't we? Speaking of getting more on your screens, the first viewing figures are starting to roll in for All In. The Zero Hour pre-show on WGN America was watched by 196,000 people, pulling in 0.8% of the 18 to 49 demographic, according to Showbuzz. It doesn't sound Sound like loads, but these are similar figures to what Impact pulls in regularly, and All In had a tougher slot on Saturday going up against the college football. The final attendance figures for the lucky buggers in the audience have also been released, with 11,263 packing themselves into the Sears Center to watch the show. 11,264 if you count Chris Jericho, who was so desperate to be involved, he impersonated a luchador. <laughs> What a loser. But it's the merchandising figures which may be the most impressive. Indie wrestler Eric Cannon said that the Bucks and Cody sold 417,430 shirts in just four months, which would make you think that they're all out of stock. But if you were one of the 11,263 people in the Sears Center, then they've got a t-shirt for you. Somebody who won't be getting one of those t-shirts though is former WWE wrestler and producer Joey Mercury, AKA Adam Carlson Birch, famed for being one half of Seth Rollins' J&J security. Mercury was set to work behind the scenes at All In, but PW Insider are reporting he missed the show after being arrested early in the morning on the day of the show. Mercury, who currently works as a producer for Ring of Honor, was woken up by police while sleeping in his car outside of a Marriott hotel in Illinois. When they ran his name, they discovered he had an outstanding warrant in Orange County, Florida. So he was taken into custody and was held on a $2,500 bail at the Cook County Department of Corrections for his court date which took place on Tuesday. Somebody get our tonga on the blower. We've got another case. A huge WWE return role has been leaked. Find out what it is by clicking the video on screen now and become a WrestleTalk Patreon today to help make weekly NXT reviews happen. I've been El Fakador and that was Lucha.